Hello, and welcome to podcast number two. <clears throat> Actually, this will be number one, if you don't include the introduction part, which was last week. So, I was giving it much thought, and I did say I was going to do the Renaissance Reformation, but, you know, I decided my first podcast series should be on the Middle Ages. Now, I may be doing a couple other podcasts at the same time, if so, the second one, Noon 2, Noon 2, right here, Noon 2, will be the uh, American Civil War, most likely. But for now, I've chosen to just concentrate on the Middle Ages. Now, the Middle Ages is, are divided up into three distinct periods. So, these are the periods we're going to be looking at here. Number one, there is 300 to 1000 AD. And then there's 1000 to 1300. And finally, 1300 to about 1500 or so. Okay? You read that? There you go. So, the first period, as I said, is, you know, that's the early Middle Ages. The next period is the High Middle Ages. And finally, we have the Late Middle Ages. Okay. Early, High, Late. Now, I've given these dates, and for instance, the late Middle Ages, it's flexible. It can be seen to have ended in 1453 with the fall of Constantinople. It can be seen to have ended as far later as, say, um, the early 18th century, and we'll talk about that. But the first part, of course, does not tend to be talked about much, okay? Why don't we talk about the early Middle Ages a lot? Why not? What's in the name? That's what I'm actually calling this um, part of this lecture. It's known as the Dark Ages. The Dark Ages, okay? For various reasons. One, there's not many sources historians have to talk about this period. We don't have many sources, so we can even get events in the right order. The Dark Ages are considered dark since the early Middle Ages was a period of general collapse. It was a period most people fled the cities for the rural parts of Europe. It was a period of declining literacy. So therefore, not many people were writing and leaving us records. It's a period of general isolation from Europe for year for the rest from the rest of the world. Government and commercial records are not generally able for us to study, and therefore many people find it depressing. Why study it if there's not anything to study? So why am I going to look at this part? Why not say start at 1000 AD? We have records then. Some, but records. Well, this is an important part of history to study, my friends. For instance, during this time, you have the fall of the Roman, Western Roman Empire, the beginning of the Eastern or the Byzantine Roman Empire. You have the development of Christianity taking over from paganism. You have interesting, nay, important people that lived during this time need to be looked at. People like St. Augustine, whose theology influenced people for thousands of years. Charlemagne, considered today to be a forerunner of European unity. King Arthur, who may or may not have existed, and we'll talk about that, whose legends need to be looked at. The events that happened later on in the Middle Ages, the events that happened afterwards, can all be seen be started in the early Middle Ages. And to understand those periods, we need to look at this period. So that's why I'm going to spend the next few weeks looking at the early Middle Ages. Now, knowledge of medieval history provides a context for understanding the modern world. 
many institutions, many ideas, many practices that we think of are, as modern are, in fact, very old. To understand what's truly modern, what's prone to change, and understand what's not purely modern and relatively immune to change, you need to know pre-modern history, including the Middle Ages. It would be impossible, for instance, to understand the French Revolution without understanding the Middle Ages. Because the revolutionaries on the left and the people who were defending France against the revolutionaries, they both had the Middle Ages firmly in mind. But there are differences between the modern world and the medieval world. Okay, number one, you can't go outside unless you're in a medieval fair and see people walking around with swords and stabbing each other. That usually doesn't happen. As far as I know. And, you know, another difference is no one, no one who lived in the Middle Ages woke up and said, hey, this is the Middle Ages we're living in. No. They never heard an idea of the Middle Ages. They followed the ideas of St. Augustine, who believed that he and all other generations were living in a stage of human history that would soon end with the coming of Christ to rule the world and judge it. The reason we call this period the Middle Ages is because of a man named Francisco Petrarca, or Petrarch. Now, he's a Renaissance humanist for whom classical literature and art was perfection itself. And therefore, he defined historical periods in cultural and not religious terms. He desired to restore classical art and classical Latin to its original purity. And since he felt that art and language had fallen into decay since the Roman Empire fell in 410, which, uh, okay, 410, fine, we'll talk about that. But everything since 410 was the age of darkness, the age of rot. Thus, the Middle Ages, since events tend to follow afterwards that are different than what came before. Now, since him, the Middle Ages have an up and down reputation. During the Protestant Reformation, Protestants attacked the Middle Ages as a time when the original doctrines and rituals of Christianity were polluted into religious cor cor corruption. The Catholics defended this period as a time of great social and religious harmony. During the Enlightenment, writers scorned this period as a period of religious faith, which they regarded as superstition that dominated Europe. But during the 19th century, 100 years later, Romantics said the Middle Ages were a period in which human emotion was given its due. Now, since the dawn of the 20th century, the Middle Ages have had positive and negative images coexisting, although the natives tend to, you know, dominate Spanish Inquisition, uh, Crusades, um, corruption in the church, just to name a few. So, you know, we're going to talk about that. Now, I must state, first of all, that the series of podcasts, this series of podcasts is going to be dedicated primarily to what we would call Western Europe. We're going to be looking at England and France and Spain and Germany of the Holy Roman Empire and Italy mostly. We're not going to be examining Russia or the Byzantine Empire all that much, although there could be parts of these podcasts that go into these areas. The first part of this video podcast is going to examine, as I said, time period from about 300 to about 650 AD. So 300 to 650 AD. Okay. Now that's the time historians will call late in antiquity. The Roman Empire is still surviving, but it's falling. We're going to look at the barbarian invasions that destroyed the empire. We're going to look at the interaction of Roman and Germanic social factors that gave rise to villages. We're going to be looking at the rise of Christianity in Europe. Then, once that has happened, we're going to go to the year 1000, 650 to 1000. Now, during this time, we're going to be centering on Northern Europe. We're going to be centering on the Collegian Empire the Empire of Charlemagne and what followed. And after that, we're going to go to the High Middle Ages. But instead of looking at events per se in a narrative, or, narrative order, 
I'm going to first of all look at the structures of society. I'm going to look at nobles. I'm going to look at clergy. And I'm going to look at the workers. The peasants and the townspeople. Because townspeople were starting to become important. Okay. So the nobles, the clergy, the workers, peasants, and town people. Now these groups were defined more as function than wealth. You had poor nobles and you had rich nobles. You had poor clergy, you had rich clergy. You had well, mostly poor peasants. Um, richer townspeople, okay, but they, you know, they worked well together. There was really no evidence of class struggle, no matter what Karl Marx would say. Now, then, we're also going to examine how 1300 was different than 1000. Why these 300 years? What happened in these 300 years that made it different? We're going to look at these people, these kinds of people, then we're going to look at the religious aspects of the Middle Ages, High Middle Ages, the educational aspects of the High Middle Ages, and then we hit the high points of the political aspects of the period. And finally, I'm going to look at the late Middle Ages, between 1300 and about 1500, as I said. Now, the first part is going to be talking about the events of the 14th century and the early 15th century. And we're going to focus on people, not events. So, you know, I'm also going to look at the witch trials and the gunpowder weapons and the printing and humanism. Okay. I'm sorry. First it's podcast, the political stuff, then we look at the people. Then finally, sometime in August or early fall, we're going to go to the major events in the second half of the 15th century, the fall of the Byzantine Empire. The uniting of Spain and Ferdinand and Isabella. The establishment of the Spanish Inquisition, which nobody expected, but nobody does expect the Spanish Inquisition. Columbus and his voyages, some of the early discovery voyages. And finally, the War of the Roses in England. So in that in mind, next time, and I'm hoping to do this uh, Wednesday or Thursday, next time we're going to look at the long decline in the Roman Empire as the year 300 dawned in Europe. Again, this is going to be on my Facebook page or my YouTube page. I, you know, invite you to enjoy the ride. Have a good day.